What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Grease's Garage. I was so stoked for this weekend because I finally got the gear I needed to get you guys on the helmet, take you with me on the bike, show you what the bike sounds like, what it rides like, and some of the back roads in my area. It was beautiful weather all week and then this happened. So, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to get the bike out and take you guys along for that ride, but I got something else planned. Today, we are gonna do a quick fabrication tutorial on something that a lot of you guys are probably doing to your tanks. Take a look over here. What we've got here is a sight gauge install on this tank. I'm gonna take you through the fabrication station that I'm working with. and the process for putting one of these things in. Settings for the machine, which will be really simple because it's just mild steel. I'll take you through the two machines I have, the setup, all of that good stuff. So stick with me, we'll show you how to get a sight gauge installed on your gas tank before the riding season starts. All right, so step one on this project here is just gonna be, you wanna mark out where you want your holes to be. Now remember, so I've got one down here, one up here. This is actually a fuel injected tank. You can see this big monstrosity down here. That's for the fuel injection. This is where the gas is gonna be coming out. You want your lower hole to be somewhere where it's pretty close to the bottom of the tank. If you put your low up here, you're gonna be thinking you're low when you really have half a tank left. So low one down low, top one up high, mark your locations and then just grab yourself a center punch center punch your holes, and then we'll come back and we'll drill them out. All right, so we got the holes on here center punch now, but even though we're gonna drill this thing out, if I could find it here, we're gonna drill this out with a step bit, but I always like to drill that first hole with a real small drill bit, just so you know you get a good clean starting point, and then once you got that hole, you can go ahead and drill it out with the center punch. So here we've got the bung itself, little top hat bung. I'm not sure how well you can see that. And basically, the top hat bung diameter is about 9 sixteenths. So we're going to drill these holes out to 9 sixteenths, and then we will come right back. All right, guys, so we got the tank laid out here, and basically what we're going to do now I just got some acetone on this rag and we're just going to clean this whole area. Get all that marker off of there. And we're just trying to get all the oils off of the metal so that when we actually start welding, you're not gonna have porosity and end up with a leaking gas tank because nobody wants that. One other thing too, to make this process a little smoother. One of these guys, this is a deburring tool. After you drill these holes, this little deburring tool will get all the little pieces out of there. Now you got a nice smooth hole so that when you, if I can find it, when you go to drop your bung in, fits in there nice and smooth. Let's just get you guys in here close up with the phone so we can get a better shot of this. Here's what you're looking for. You want this to be a nice tight fit down under here. If you drill this way out and this thing's slopping all around in there, you can have a much bigger gap to fill. It's not impossible, but it's a lot trickier. So again, measure the inside diameter, or excuse me, the outer diameter of this part down here so that when you drill your hole, see how it doesn't even fall in? You almost gotta push it in. That's what you're looking for. What we're gonna do now is get a tack. One, two, three, four, on all four sides of this little top hat bung. And then what we'll do is we'll weld it in quarters. Same thing, you don't want to do all the welding just one way around. You want to do this quarter, this quarter, that one, and then this one. That's gonna help keep this thing from moving or twisting and ending up cockeyed to one side. Okay guys, before we get into the welding, I just want to show you what we're working with here. This machine right here, 
is my primary machine. This is an AHP AlphaTig 201 XD. This is like a, I think this machine, they have a newer version. I think they're onto the 203 at this point. Um, this was like a $700 machine. I've had it five years. This is the machine I recommend you start out with. Whatever their newest version is, pick that up. People always ask me, you know, what about this machine? What about this other one? What about this Eastwood? Yada, yada, yada. I don't recommend them. I recommend this one. If you want somebody to recommend a different machine, you have to talk to somebody else. But this one right here has been so solid. I've never had a problem with it. If you want to buy something else, you're taking your chances. This is the one I recommend. Over here, this is the backup machine slash travel machine. We got the Miller Star. This is the 161 STL. So this does stick and TIG, uh, lift arc TIG only, and this machine is DC only, which means it only welds steel and stainless steel. This one over here can do steel, stainless, and aluminum. So this does it all. This is more of a portable, as you can see, hand for scale here. This is a very tiny machine. It's like lunchbox size. I love this little guy right here. This is when I go to people's garages to help them with their projects. I take along this guy. This one over here is my dedicated machine for the home shop. Got a 120 cubic foot argon cylinder right here. Here's the proof that this is actually not a fabrication shop. This is my home garage. This is where I do everything for the house. It's got a ton of projects going on right now, but for the time being, 120 foot argon tank, cubic foot argon tank. This is a 17 style torch with a Jazzy 10 cup. You don't need a fancy cup like this, trust me. You can do everything I'm gonna do today with pretty much any cup. Um, but this is the one I like most, so I use it. Got that guy on there, dual flow meter on here. This lets me plug in both machines at the same time so I don't have to keep switching the argon line from this one to that one when I go back and forth. So that's the overview of it. Once I kick this on, the fan's gonna come on, but I'll show you just briefly. Switches on the back, power it up. Over here, we got our main amps. For this job, we don't need much. I'm just gonna set this thing probably, I'll probably leave it at 130. That's a lot for what we're doing, but what I do is I use the foot pedal anyway, so I'm not gonna be using all 130 amps. We're gonna be on DC because this is mild steel. AC would be for aluminum. This setting right here is TIG. 2T4T, this is uh, for torch switches. This isn't relevant to what we're doing right now. And then this is the pulse meter. This is your slow pulse. The middle setting is your fast pulse. And then down at the bottom, you've got just straight current. So straight current and the main amps is all we need to worry. And as you see, we got foot pedal up here. That's funny because pedal is spelled wrong too. That's how you know it's an import machine. This one right here, We'll pop this over here. Ground is clamped to the bottom of the table and we're gonna get into welding up this tank. I'll show you this too, just briefly. I just wanna remind people that you don't have to have a, a ton of money to do this stuff. It really is easier than you think. This is a Jackson, I believe, or not, or a, yeah, Jackson Huntsman hood. It's made out of like composite or cardboard or something. I've had this thing for five or six years now. Never had a problem with it. You don't have to buy some crazy $300, $400 speed glass hood. I swear to God, it's it's a complete waste of your money. This right here, Arc One makes this lens. This is an auto darkening lens. This lens was like 50 bucks. The hood itself was like 50 bucks. And I've never replaced either one of them. My entire welding career, I've had this exact same helmet. So all of that stuff out of the way, let's get into welding in this bung. All right, so what we got here now, we got both bungs tacked in. Basically, we just got a tack on all four corners. Over here, we got the same thing. And now, like I said earlier, we're gonna weld it in quarters. Let me put this down so I can hold this here. So we're gonna weld here, and then the opposing side right there, 
And then we're gonna do the same thing. We'll weld the top and we'll weld the bottom. All right, guys, and then here's our finished product. We've got the bung all welded in. Same deal over here. And now we're gonna take these threaded barbs here. Once this cools, you don't wanna do it right this second. I'm gonna take these barbs, spin them into here, route the line, and that'll be a finished sight gauge. It's that simple. All right, guys, so here we are. This is our finished sight gauge. So, like I said, you want this one high up toward the top. You want this one to be down low. And then you can route this fuel line any way you want it. But this is what I got right now. He can change it later, make it longer, do whatever he wants with it. But for the time being, let's put this thing down here. We've got our completed sight tube. So if you're looking to add one of these to your bike, it is super simple. Two bungs, a quick weld. We did this, by the way, with ER70 S2 filler rod pop that in there and you are good to go all right guys that's going to do it for this week's video quick and simple one we just popped in this sight gauge right over here if this is something you're looking to do to your bike go for it super simple if it's your first welding project this would be a great one to jump into not a complex weld not a super critical component go ahead give it a shot if you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to help people out. I love to talk about this kind of stuff. So if you're getting your first machine, you're trying to get into fabrication in general, hit me up, subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting out tons more videos like this, but for the time being, thank you guys for checking it out. Subscribe, and I'll see you next week.